All right, here's the 4.2 homework video. Uh, homework assignment 4.2, there are seven questions in here, although I think some of them will go pretty quickly for you. Uh, this first one, what we're doing is we're creating a confidence interval. So you measure 42 textbooks weights, that's your sample size, and find they have a mean weight of 70 ounces, so that's your sample average. Assume the population standard deviation is three ounces, so weird that you know the population standard deviation, but you do know the population standard deviation, sigma, and all these problems. And based on this information, you're supposed to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true population mean textbook weight. Um, so essentially, you're going to use a function on your calculator, the Z interval function on your calculator, type in some numbers, it should spit out two numbers, round them to two decimal places, put those numbers here and here, and you're good. That's it. No tricks to this one or anything. Um, should be fairly straightforward. Second problem, similar to the first one, they give you a bunch of information and you make a confidence interval. The only thing at the end here that's kind of weird is they ask you what parameter it is that you are estimating. I don't know. That's kind of a waste of your time. In this section, we're always estimating mu, right? We always don't know the population average, and we always estimate that based on the sample average, which is given to you in the problem. So I'm just telling you to ch choose mu here and then put your numbers here and here. Looks like this time they want you to round to three decimal places. And you can ignore this part about do not round in between steps um, because the way you're doing these with your calculator functions, I don't even think there'd be an, a chance for you to round things. So nothing for you to worry about there. Question three, this one's slightly different, but I didn't want to get rid of it. I figured I'd just tell students one thing. So if you look through it quickly, uh, you're making a confidence interval and then you're interpreting your confidence interval. If you have a hard time with that one, just go back to the video. And the third step in our four-step process for confidence intervals uh, talks about the interpretation of these things, what they tell you. And one of these should be pretty close to the way we interpreted it in that video. The one minor thing that you might not even notice, I just feel like I have to talk about it, is to use the z-interval function on your calculator, which you will be using in this problem. Technically, you need to know the population standard deviation. And if you read this thing really carefully, it tells you the sample standard deviation in here, not the population standard deviation. Because our sample size is so large, it ends up not mattering in this problem. So just leave it, do it all normal, pretend this is the population standard deviation, pretend that's sigma right there. Uh, but later on, when we talk about these in a future section and look back, I will make a bigger distinction there. Is this the population or the sample standard deviation? But right now, you don't have to worry about it. You only kind of know one way to do these. And the only way you know how to do these is if this is sigma right here. So just pretend that it is. One other comment, if you look at this histogram, it doesn't look like it's normal. It's kind of confusing, right? This is the parent distribution. doesn't matter if the parent distribution is normal as long, because we're talking about the sampling distribution as long as our sample size is large enough, greater than or equal to 30. So you don't use this histogram at all. It's just kind of extra information that's in there. Um, figure out your confidence interval, round to two decimal places, and interpret. Question four. Uh, this one is a little bit different. I guess it gets more on the theoretical side. You don't actually make a confidence interval here. Somebody else already did it for you. This was the answer they got. So somebody took their calculator, used Z interval, and got this answer. 3.40 to 4.24. In the context of, you can read the problem, understand what they're talking about. And so the first thing you're supposed to do is the third of our four steps when we talk about confidence intervals where you, well you interpret. So if you go back to that video, you'll see how we interpret our answers, and one of these should match up pretty closely with how we interpret our answer. And then there's two theoretical things, which would be good to know, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. These are the kind of things that, I don't know, show up as like a true-false maybe on the midterm. It's minor stuff. It's if you're really trying to get an A and not an A minus, make sure you can do these things. Uh, you read through here, and what they're asking you, I guess what they're saying is you originally were making a 95% confidence interval. And now you're going to increase that. You're going to make it a 99% confidence interval. And the question is, will your new interval, if you leave everything else the same, be smaller or larger? And by smaller, they kind of mean skinnier, and larger, they mean wider. Will it have a smaller margin of error or a larger margin of error if you increase the level of confidence to 99%? And I think I talked about that in that video. Maybe it was the fourth step uh, when we talked about margin of error. Uh, so you can find a video on confidence intervals that talks about that. And then finally, C is a lot like B, except in C, instead of changing the level of confidence from 95 to 99, we change the sample size. So originally the sample size was 1,100 people. So we had a large sample. And then we reduced the sample size, or at least in my version of these, they might change for you. 
In my version, we reduce the sample size. N gets smaller. So think about what that will do to the spread. I guess all they ask you is what will that do to the spread? Will the standard error, which is the spread of the sampling distribution, be large or smaller or about the same if we make that change to our sample size? So theoretical stuff, hopefully that at least makes sense what the question is asking, and then you can try your best to get them right. Question five, uh, similar to what we were doing in question four, where you're supposed to figure out which of the following would result in the narrowest confidence interval. So narrow confidence interval would mean it has a smaller margin of error. So the smallest margin of error is what you're looking for. So you got to figure out if my sample size is small or large, is a larger sample size going to correspond with a narrow confidence interval or is a smaller sample size going to correspond with a narrow confidence interval? Because <clears throat> it's either 30 or 100, the sample size. So figure out which of those two will have the narrowest confidence interval. And then after you do that, you'll have to decide whether a lower or a higher level of confidence will correspond with a narrow confidence interval. So there's kind of two different things changing, the sample size and the level of confidence. You're supposed to figure out which two things will result in the narrowest confidence interval. And then six and seven, uh, those are the ones where you have to figure out the sample size. So this is that formula I gave you that n equals, and then in parentheses, z sub alpha over two divided by the margin of error. And that thing is multiplied by sigma. And then that entire thing is inside the parentheses and that's squared. That formula that I gave you in the videos where you figure out n, that's what you're supposed to use here. So figure out alpha from this, figure out alpha divided by two, figure out z, the z score that has alpha divided by two above it. And that goes into your formula along with sigma, which is given to you in the problem. And the margin of error, which they're getting at with this sentence here. If you're within eight pounds of the actual weight, your margin of error is eight. So put all those into your formula and see what you get for your sample size. I think your answer will end up being a decimal. And remember, you want to round this up to the next whole number. So if your answer is 193.1, you'd actually type in 194, surprisingly. So that's the idea for both 6 and 7. You do the same thing twice. Read through this. From here, you can figure out alpha. Uh, they should give you the standard deviation somewhere. Here it is. And then they tell you the margin of error up here. And I'm telling you all these answers or parts for the answer, but it'd be nice if you could read through here and be like, oh yeah, I see why that's the margin of error. I see why that's the standard deviation, that kind of stuff. Figure out your sample size, same thing. Don't forget to round up to the nearest whole number. Um, the system's a little bit pickier than I will be on quizzes and such. And that's all I got for this homework.